Hi everyone, in this video I'd like to show you a few techniques that I'm using in Substance Designer to generate some interesting uh, shapes and then I'm gonna take those into Photoshop and maybe go through some concepting stage as well to create a little bit more interesting trails and um, just exaggerate those shapes a bit more. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start in Substance Designer where we're gonna um, create couple variations basically is to uh, generate few ideas and uh, basically like a starting point for us um, so we can expand it in uh, Photoshop and then we're gonna take those into Photoshop add some colors to it and later on we're just gonna uh, take it a bit further using Photoshop tools and add some details to it as well um, the idea behind it is to create a few interesting shapes and uh, some concepting as well so it might help us uh, later on in the engine uh, once we will know what we actually want to make um, if you like this video then I'm probably gonna create a few more for example how to create um, some trails in Substance Designer and Photoshop as well a uh, few lightnings uh, textures so all those are titleable and um, also maybe some impacts and cast effects as well that we're gonna basically um, take further uh, take it further in Photoshop and uh, go, gonna go through the concepting stage as well okay so let's start in substance designer so what we're gonna do we're gonna create a shape and we're gonna scale it down and rotate it 45 degrees as well now we're gonna use a directional blur and we're just gonna stretch it and if you want to change the maximum value you just click here and pull your own value and um, I think 20 was maximum but I just changed it to 50 as I just need a bit more and I'm gonna use a histogram scan just to get my uh, just to get the shape and uh, see I just it needs to be a little bit more smaller than this so I'm just gonna go back to the shape node and tweak the scale um, a bit okay and I'm gonna use this uh, texture and I'm what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna use a uh, directional warp So we're getting something i'm just gonna put um, 40 value in there maybe 35 let's try 35 first and i'm gonna change the amount uh, of those lines um, as well okay so what i'm looking right now it's just i'm looking for a bit more interesting shape and i'm focusing on uh, this end so i've changed the x amount to one and 18 on uh, Y and so I don't like right now it's the front of it so I'm just gonna get rid of it I'm gonna use a blend node also I'm gonna create gradient um, gradient linear one I'm gonna rotate it 90 degree I'm gonna run it through histogram scan and I'm gonna use subtract on the on the blend node. Now we can go back to a histogram and change the position and the contrast. Of it. So now I can control the uh, the position of our subtraction. Okay, so that should be okay. And now we've got this uh, shape. We can. And what we probably want to do, we're just going to move it a little, a little bit forward so we can have a bit more space in the back here so we can uh, blur it. So I'm just going to do this for now. Yep. I'm going to put directional blur next. And we change the value to 50 so we can have this uh, trail to be a little bit longer. Now what we want, we want to have a um, solid white starting from here. So we probably want to do another blend. And 
I'm just gonna select this gradient and histogram scan. No, actually no, we just wanna have another shape. I think shape might be a better solution to this. And I just wanna add this shape and now I'm just gonna scale it to uh, match the size and use transform as well. So I can control exactly where I want this to be. So I want this to be maybe here. I'm gonna run it through another blend. Now I'm gonna duplicate gradient and histogram scan and use this for opacity so I can control uh, where the front of the projector is gonna end. And now I can go to the histogram and nothing's gonna happen because Because I don't subtract and it needs to be on the copy. Yep, now it works. Great. Okay, so now we have this uh, end of the projectile and let's maybe now work on the front of it. So let's create another shape. Um, let's try to work with the circle. We're just gonna blend it again. And go back to the shape and change the scale of it um, and in the blend node we're gonna set it up to add add linear dodge so now we'll try to match the shape of it um, a little bit closer and now we want to move it uh, using transform to match the position of it so I'm just double clicking on the blend node and uh, clicking once on the transform so I can have an option of the transform and just moving a little bit forward. And so as you can see the circles, circle is a little bit larger than, the, um, than this trail so I just want to match it a little bit better. So I'm going to try 35, uh, 35 and 2, that, sh that should be okay. Okay, great. So now what we can do, we want to create a, um, a blur outside of the projectile. So what blur is going to do is just going to add in this nice bloom effect once we will get this texture into the game engine. Um, I think it might be a little bit too big, so let's use another transform to scale it. and we want to disable tiling as well because as you can see this is coming through here so um, you can see tiling mode here just click here in absolute and select no tiling and that's going to get rid of uh, the tiling effect so now we want to run it through a um, blur and call it to on Maybe let's increase the blur a little bit um, to here and let's blend it with the original texture. Set the mode to add. So as you can see, we've got this nice subtle blur outside. And so this is one of the shapes and maybe let's uh, duplicate our circle and trans transform and uh, let's try to create um, different shapes. So I'm gonna double click on blend again, click once on uh, on the shape and maybe try square with 45 degree rotation. I'm gonna use this transform and there you go. And as a last, I'm not sure if this shape actually is gonna work but it's better to um, have it in Photoshop so we can experiment with it. I think 
the scale of it is a little bit too big. So maybe let's try up 35 and 5. And maybe a little bit more wider. Up to here. But I'm just going to use transform to move it a bit. Because I can see the transition from, uh, from here to here is a bit too harsh. Okay, and just want to tweak the scale just a bit. Mm. Okay, that should be it. So now you can see we just got those three different shapes and once we're gonna run it through the whole network and we're gonna get uh, similar results in terms of this um, blur and uh, bloom effect. So if I wanna just have different shapes I'm just gonna change those. And so as you can see it just quickly allows you to create this procedural way to generate um, various projectiles and the idea behind it is to give you um, something that you can work on in the later stage in Photoshop uh, where we're actually gonna do some concepting and we're gonna manipulate those shapes um, a little bit further. Uh, after I finished recording the video, I noticed that it's actually a lot better if, I'm, if in our last node, which is blend, we're going to change from add to max lighten, because what it's going to do actually is going to give us um, a little bit better visuals for this trail and it's not going to override the pixels uh, that we had uh, before. So if you just compare those two, you see this is like over the top and I think actually max works a lot better. So. If you could just you know select our last node which is blend and just change it to max as i think it's gonna give us a better result later on once we will start um, adjusting some things in photoshop so now what we can do we can just copy all those three uh, projectiles that we've created and we're just gonna take it into photoshop so we can either click on our last node, click save and save it into location or we can just copy to clipboard. Uh, I'm just going to copy to clipboard, I'm just going to go to Photoshop and Control V, I'm just going to paste it. Um, I'm also going to change image and I'm going to go to the um, image adjustments or mode and I'm going to change to RGB colors. I'm just going to select on flatten. So um, basically uh, I'll be able to add colors to it. So um, this is the part one um, and in the second part we're actually gonna add some colors to it and we're gonna uh, concept a little bit more our projectiles. We're gonna add some trails and um, some swirly effects as well. Um, let me know if it's something that you would like to see more of um, if you actually want me to create a bit more tutorials how, how I create textures uh, using Substance and Photoshop. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that video and thanks for watching. It would be awesome if you could actually share that video uh, with some other people. Maybe someone else might be interested as well how to, you know, create uh, some basic projectiles because I think I'm just going through some uh, basic process, basic processes how to uh, create those. Um, in this video, I'm not, I'm not going to use my tablet. I'm just going to use my mouse. Um, just to show you how simple that is and uh, what's my process is for those. Maybe later on I'm just going to use my tablet if I will need um, a bit more control. But for those I just want to you know stay in the basics and um, show you the really basic stuff. Um, feel free uh, to leave a comment if you have any questions. 